I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a question from my student on limits of rational functions. The question here is, find the value of constant c for the limit of the given function to exist as x approaches 3. The function is given to us as f of x equal to x square plus x plus c divided by x square minus 5x plus 6. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. Now let us see whether the limit exists at 3 or not. For that, we can actually factor the denominator and then analyze. Denominator is x squared minus 5x plus 6. We could factor using product and sum. Product of 6, sum of minus 5. Uh, both negative 3 and 2 will give us the factored form. So we could write this as x squared plus x plus c over x minus 3 times x minus 2. Now the question really is that we need to ensure that limit of this function f of x exists as x approaches 3. So as x approaches 3, we have a limit to this. Now when you see this kind of a function, x minus 3 is a factor in the denominator and that clearly indicates that the limit does not exist at x minus 3 since there is a vertical asymptote here, right? So, so as you approach a vertical asymptote, you will be approaching either positive infinity or negative infinity. Both these terms are not real numbers, so the limit does not exist. However, there is a way for limit to exist and the concept here is that we could have same factors in the numerator and denominator, right? So we are looking for, if we convert this factor into a whole, that is to say, that if we have a factor of x minus 3 in the numerator, then the limit can exist, right? So, so we know this part, that the limit can exist if numerator which is x squared plus x plus c has a factor x minus 3, right? Since that is going to lead to a whole and then we can approach from both sides a fixed value, right? So that is the concept. So we're going to use this concept to solve the question. I hope the concept is clear, okay? Now, how to work this numerator out so that we could have x minus 3 as a factor? I'll show you two different ways of doing the same thing. So one is by long division, right? We want x minus 3 to be the factor. So what we can do is that we could divide the numerator, which is uh, x squared plus x plus c, by x minus 3, right? x minus 3. So when we divide, if we get 0 remainder, then we have this as a factor in the numerator, correct? That's the concept, right? So it could go x times, we have x squared minus 3x. When you take away, you get 4x plus c. Now you have to do it 4 times. So 4x 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. And when you take away, you get c plus 12. Now, for x minus two, 3 to be a factor, we know one of the factors x plus 4, this remainder should be 0, right? So, so c minus 12, or I mean c plus 12, should be equal to 0 for x minus 3 to be a factor. Is it okay? So this implies that c is equals to minus 12. So this is one way of solving. I hope you understood the concept, right? So this means that c should be minus 12. And that is how we could 
find the value of the constant c, right? So now I hope the question makes some sense to you, right? Well, this is one way of doing it. So we found the value c as minus 12. Alternate method, which I'll prefer, and which can be used by many students who are not aware of this division process, is kind of simple. We have this term, x squared plus x plus c in the numerator. We want to factor, right? So, and we know x minus 3 should be one of the factors. What is the other factor? This is what we want to know. From here, we can get c, right? Now, the concept is that the center part should be sum of this and this, correct? We need a sum of 1 plus 1. So that number has to be, has to be a plus 4, right? That number has to be plus 4. So then only you get x here in the center. The sum of these two, perfect. Now, if you expand this, let me do it long way. x times x is x squared. x times 4 is 4x minus 3x and minus 12. I'm only showing you that this is the correct value, right? But we could have written the answer very fast anyway. So minus 12. And when you combine these two terms, you do get x squared plus x minus 12. And if you compare these two, right? So if you compare these two, you can see that the value of the c should be minus 12. You get the answer, right? So, so likewise, we can adopt any method, any of these, uh, and we can say c is equal to minus 12. I hope you understand and appreciate uh, the approach which I've taken here. Let's go through it once again. When we are trying to say that the limit should exist as x approach a value, in that case, if we have a factor in the denominator, if we create a similar factor in the numerator, they cancel out, right? So, so let's now solve this and see what the limit could be, right? It is just an extension to this particular question, right? So, so now we could write this as limit when x approaches 3. Now we could write this numerator as product of these two, which is x minus 3 times x plus 4, right? Divided by x minus 3 times x minus 2. Since we ensured that we have a common factor, right? So, well, in this case, you know, let me write here, x is not equal to 3 or 2, right? So, so now we could write down what the limit is. Substitute 3 here. So we get 3 plus 4 over 3 minus 2, which is 7, right? So the limit of this function is 7, and the value of c is minus 12, right? So that's just an extension to show you that we have just the right answer. Amanil Kumar, and I hope that helps. Thank you, and all the best.